Hi, welcome to Portage County Matters. I'm Patty Dreyer, Portage County Executive. And my guest on today's show is Jenny Gathke. She's our public health officer in Portage County with our Department of Health and Human Services. I can't wait to talk with Jenny about lots of great information related to public health. But as usual, I'll start with a few minutes of news first, some really important news notes to keep everybody updated on many topics. Starting with McDill Dam Repair, uh, a theme of many shows by now. As of the taping of the show in late October, the repairs are about two weeks from completion, and that would put it then at a completion before Thanksgiving. Our Highway Commissioner, Brian Kelly, continues to give me regular updates and to give other co uh, county leaders updates. And so, again, we're very pleased with the progress to date. Solid Waste Department leadership. Since I took office in April 2010, we've made a lot of progress in improving the handle that we have on our solid waste department and its budget. And part of that is due to the really hard, dedicated work of John Gardner, who was first hired as our, our uh, solid waste administrator in an LTE position to help us get uh, a build our understanding around that program. But then his position was transformed into an interim solid waste director position. Well, he's done a marvelous job, and I'll give you some, some indicators of that in a moment. But basically, we are now uh, conducting a search and screen process for a new director of the Solid Waste Department, a permanent one rather than an interim one. So anyway, stand by for more information on that uh, new director, Phil, when it, when it comes along. We have interviews this coming week. As far as our progress with the Solid Waste Department, we have 21 participating municipalities in Portage County that are members of the Solid Waste Consortium, as many of you know. And under D John's directorship, along with the Solid Waste Board's leadership, each of these municipalities has now renewed their contracts through 2019. We've sold some of the excess land that was located across from the landfill in the town of Stockton, land that we didn't need anymore for uh, a landfill expansion since our landfill is closed. And we put that property back on the tax rolls. Our overall management and understanding of the dynamics of this program and business has, has just skyrocketed for us. We've really, really gotten a, a tremendous grasp on this dynamic uh, program and business. We also have a better market for recyclables, and all of these things have resulted in a much stronger financial position for our solid waste enterprise fund. In fact, in our recent Shank audit, it shows us uh, in our 2011 audit, so it looks at back at the whole year of 2011, the last complete year we have to look at, it shows a net gain of over half a million dollars in that, um, that department's fund. So that's, that's incredible for progress. That said, it's really hard to see John go. So again, thank you, John Gardner, and thanks to our Solid Waste Board for helping us move to this more wonderful place for our department. And I'm just going to look forward to that progress continuing under the directorship of whomever we hire for the new Solid Waste direct, uh, Department Administrator's position. Speaking of progress, our health care center, the Portage County Health Care Center, continues both financial and quality care progress. The health care center is also, just like our solid waste department, by definition, an enterprise fund. And, and um, refer, referring to the same audit report from Shank that was just given to us over the last uh, couple of weeks, before the taping of this show, it shows that we went from a net loss of about $573,000 in 2010 to a net loss of $31,500 in 2011. So much more balance toward um, a sustainable operation fiscally, which is really important to keeping the service available for people in our community. We've planned our 2013 budget with about 15% less reliance on county levy, freeing up over $173,000 of county levy that the, then we could direct and dedicate to other areas of our county mission and need. And we've done that, so I'm very pleased with that progress. I want to tell you, though, and I want to make sure that you understand that I believe progress isn't only about the numbers in the picture, but it's also about the quality of care at the bedside of every resident and also the quality of the work experience for workers there. So we're working really hard through an advisory team at the Portage County Health Care Center where members of, of the organization 
uh, come around a common table once a month. They each come from different shifts and positions in a leadership capacity and communication link to all the other workers at the center. And we're problem solving together. Just yesterday, I have to say it was our best meeting that I have been part of. There were um, reports on what improvements we're making in quality related to nursing care, in systems efficiencies, in planning and training, and we troubleshooted and we had open conversations about some things that we want to improve to make the work environment better. And I, again, I was very impressed at, with the hard work and told the group so yesterday. So we're going to continue meeting and we are seeing progress. We're integra integrating some new technologies there, like um, computer technologies for record keeping on the wings. We didn't have that before. And we're getting ready for our new nurse call technology when, it, when that capital project is kicked off in 2013. So again, congratulations to everybody for your really hard work at the healthcare center. Courthouse restoration, We're, we have now completed our two north entrances and they are uh, available for staff access only. It's not public access due to the, the security uh, kick-ups, I guess you would say, at the, at the uh, courthouse. But the um, east and the west sides of the building have yet to be completed. And the Church Street entrance in particular is the one that is getting some extra attention where the handicap ramp access is located. So we're working to finish up these entrances as soon as we can. Certainly the, the um, Church Street entrance will be completed yet this fall. The Department of Corrections project, you haven't heard a little bit in a little while on this. We've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes. The Wisconsin Department of Corrections, as many of you know, had invited Portage County to be the one, the one county, through which they would develop and test a new model for community-based corrections, a model that we hope will reduce the revolving door at the jail, a model that will uh, be more restorative than the jail can be in helping people address the core issues of their lives that result in them landing back jail, in jail over and over and over again. And we've been working with a lot of community members and a team of staff members in pulling together the concept for this plan. I spoke with state leaders of the Department of Corrections this week and they are quote unquote highly impressed <laughs> with the progress that we have made to date in developing the concept that it hits the mark with what they were looking for. And so now what we're doing is we're finalizing the budget and then we'll be ready to take that to the oversight committee and the county board, hoping to get it passed through the county board to launch the project in January. We have now um, finalized the details. This will be a five, five year project and the state has told me that uh, we are looking at being able to be reimbursed for all of the staff time that is dedicated to the project in addition to the contracts that will be important like a contract with Justice Works for mentoring services that will be uh, helping us link offenders with volunteers in the community to help them on life skills and, and help them on employment strategies and so on and so forth. The states told me that this five-year project will be uh, bringing in about $300,000 to $350,000 uh, at least at the top end to help us cover for the project. Of course, we're being conservative in how we lay the project out and how we put it together because if it's too expensive, it won't be something that can be replicated across the state of Wisconsin in every county. So we are working hard and I have to really commend the staff and Ross Dick, our um, County's Justice Programs Administrator who's been chairing that effort. He'll be the guest on the show next month, so we'll find out a lot more about the progress and all the other details related to developing, delivering, what it'll be to coordinate this project and evaluate it in our, in our coming year. County offices, just transitioning quickly, county offices will be closed on Thanksgiving, of course, but also the Friday after Thanksgiving in case some of you were not aware. There's an open house in my office in December. I, I've started this tradition with my, my um, executive assistant, Jamie Gabert. Together we bake in our own kitchens a few, a few special things and we bring in some other goodies. Uh, again, this is a gift that we bring to all of those that we work with and serve. And we invite you to come. It's a public uh, opportunity for you to come into your office, the county executive's office, on December 20th from 9 till 3. Uh, Any time in that time frame, if you want to come for a few minutes, express a concern, see what it looks like, meet us for the first time, whatever, we hope that you'll come. 
And the last point of, of an update I wanted to give you before I get to the guest um, today, and that is about strategic planning. Now we've talked about this before, and for the last couple of years we've taken various steps along the way. Remember, we have 30 departments and county governments, so when you're looking at strategic planning across 30 departments with diverse missions, and each of these department leaders have varying capacities, skills, knowledge bases related to planning, you know, it's a big task, and that process is continuing. I've built into the 2013 budget some elements of strategic planning that I wanted to highlight. We're also kicking off another aspect of this planning already this month in November. What we have is, is that we are, um, we are going to have an operational plan that will I, I think will be the outcome of the work that we have probably by April or May next year. We'll have a, um, a, a number of different processes that we use, in, input uh, opportunities for staff as well as for the county board and for others. And uh, anyway, we'll end up with those, those big guiding uh, visions and um, the big rocks, I guess they call it, the big rocks that will be moving in the shorter term future from an operation standpoint. As that's moving along, we're also going to continue through the Space and Properties Committee and with the support of a capital project that I put into the 2013 budget that we will uh, develop a, a long-term physical space plan, especially for the campus concept and county government. So that we'll have then, when you put the operations plan together with the space plan, you'll be able to have a course that's charted for us to guide us forward as we plan for the 2014 budget and beyond. So I'm really looking forward to this and I know that with the help of Walter Jankowski and Reinventions, which is the consultant that we're working with out of Madison, Wisconsin, as well as lots of other really skilled workers and skilled staff and county board leadership as well as um, my own leadership, I think when we put all of that together along with uh, some help from our community, we'll be able to come up with the right kind of plan for our future that will guide us all forward. So, big lifting that we're all gonna do over the, the coming year. That's the end of the news notes in this show and I'd like to introduce you to my guest, Jenny Gafke, our health officer here for Portage County. Jenny's been hired in uh, July yep. and I am so pleased to welcome you to Portage County. Thank you, I'm pleased to be here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how your experience has been in getting accustomed to Portage County because you didn't you didn't grow up right here in this neighborhood. I did not. I did not. Um, uh, I have an undergraduate degree um, from the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. So although I did not grow up in Stevens Point, I uh, did go to school in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that was in community health education. I have a master's degree in public administration from the State University of New York College at Brockport. Um, and I would say that my expertise uh, lies within uh, facilitation, project management, planning, and program development. Um, I worked for, previous to this job, I worked for Everest University Online as a project manager in Tampa, Florida, and so that brought me uh, I was in Tampa before I came here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then previous to that job, I worked as a planner uh, for uh, public health and environment for Carver County. Uh, so I spent some time there as well. Uh, so I think, well, we could call you a reverse snowbird. Yeah, you could. <laughs> I'm just dreaming up <laughs> that right now. That works. J Jenny, I've had the opportunity already since you've you've been on staff since July to work with you in a number of different capacities. And I just have to say, I just think we made a, 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 a stupendous selection. Thank you. And I really can see that project facilitation aspect come through. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're gonna talk about a number of different aspects of projects that you've been guiding along since you've been on staff here. But let's go and talk with everybody about public health in a general way, what a public health officer does as it relates to the public health of our community. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll let you take it from sure. there for a moment. Um, well, uh, I like to kind of talk, like you said, about public health in general uh, because I work with a great team and it's, it's not just the health officer that's the mm -hmm. face of public health, it's the entire team. Um, and so really, uh, national models give us three responsibilities that public health really has. The first one is to um, assess community health needs. 
The second is um, really around policy development. And the third is around assurance. And so I'll talk a little bit more mm -hmm. about um, all three of those areas. Assessment um, really means a uh, collection of data, right? We collect data, we collect things for ease, we collect um, things that people are, you know, what, what are people dying of? What are people becoming sick from? And you kind of use those indicators and mm -hmm. we collect information on those. Um, and then we analyze that data, we look at it and we say, okay, um, you know, people are dying of this, people are, people are getting sick of this. Um, <laughs> getting sick of this. <laughs> They're getting Hopefully sick from Hopefully not something. on the show, Jenny. Right, not on the show. <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, and we also look at things in terms of uh, what types of community programs do we have, community initiatives going on, what's happening within our community that addresses these types of things, and what's not happening. Um, and what do we have, uh, you know, what's feasible for us to do? And, and we, we tie all of that into our analysis. Um, and then from that, we really do a prior prioritization and we say, okay, what really are the needs of the community and what can we make, have an effect on? Um, and so that's really kind of all tied into that assessment piece. Are you still working with Healthy People Portage County as in trying to help us get a pulse on, on what our community needs? Well, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. um, Healthy People Portage County, um, from my understanding, was an initiative that came out of the last health assessment that was done in this county. Yep, I was part of it, I there remember. You go. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what we've done a new one now, and we've actually worked with United Way and Ministry uh, to, for on the life report. And I have a copy of that Excellent. here. Um, this is what it looks like, and it's available on the United uh, Way website, I know. Um, and I know that there was a, mm -hmm. um, uh, a session that they held um, community to, presentation. A community presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you um, about what what was a uh, what came out of that life report. And two of the things that came out of it were um, uh, AODA issues and obesity. obesity. Yep. Yes, um, and so. Uh, that's kind of the next step. And so um, we're looking at what we can do with that Healthy People um, Portage County Coalition and how that fits oh. in with this new um, now new, new assessment. Oh, very interesting. Yes. I knew there was going to be a tie yes. back, so, but so now I there get you to go. discover I, that I with your help. I wrapped it all up for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So when you're taking a look, okay, so you assessed and then you are uh, trying to fine tune what the needs are. Right. Now then comes policies, I'm going right. to guess. So there, so there's then that policy development piece. And I was just going to kind of give you a few examples yeah. of policy. Uh, policies really happen you know, at the national, at the state, the local, and then obviously the internal to public health level. National policy, you, know, you take a look at the Women, Infants, and Children program, WIC. That came out of a national policy, that oh program. Um, uh, the state example would be like Wisconsin school immunization mm -hmm. requirements. There's a policy on immunizations for school-aged children, whether or not, you know, the immunizations they need to have to get into school. Um, a local example would be our chapter four. I think there, for our uh, ordinances, there's a health and sanitation ordinance for chapter four for Portage County. And so that would be an example of local policy. And then from there, you just to, to go on to your assurance piece. So then right. you're going to be monitoring the right. progress on those policies, exactly. I would Exactly. So enforcement of the policies. Um, uh, that an example would be our environmental health area. There is there's statutes um, and ordinances that that um, you know restaurants and and uh, grocery stores need to license in order to uh, move forward, and they need to meet certain standards. And so we have um, sanitarians that go into these places and provide licenses and make sure that they're doing all the checks and things like that. So that would be that assurance and enforcement piece. I'm following you now. Talk about that's most of that stuff is everyday, as in everyday public health stuff. Yes. What about an emergency? I know your authorities are very interesting as in statutory authorities of the health officer position when it comes to emergency declarations, emergency, uh, emergencies for our health. Yes. Well, yeah, talk a little around that, Jenny. Um, I'm, I'm still new from July, so mm -hmm. I'm just getting uh, to know what all the statutes and ordinances and things like that are. But in general, um, for emergency preparedness, uh, for example, if there is a communicable disease outbreak or something like that. Um, like whooping cough. Like whooping cough, yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, we are able to, uh, you know, either, well, not in whooping cough's case, but if there is a mass emergency, okay. um, we are able to set up like an incident command system where you know oh. the health officer or one of the appropriate staff members within the agency mm -hmm. would become the incident commander, um, and so we we use that model in public health as well, along with I know emergency management uses something like that sure. as well, um, and so you know we either would take a, a lead role uh, lead role in a public health emergency or we would be uh, a supportive role, um, depending on uh, what type of emergency is occurring within the county. And I 
I'd like to transition to a current health issue in our county okay. that some people have heard about in the news. And um, you've been dealing with it. It's, this is the Alm Road cleanup effort. We have some public health threats in the, on the Alm Road property mm -hmm. that relate to garbage that has been stored up there for a number of years, it appears. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so talk a little around, this is in the town of Amherst in the eastern part of the county. So talk a little about how has the public health officer role played into this picture? Right. So the criminal scene is closed, mm -hmm. you know, all the investigation pieces are done, and again, that's all for the courts to decide. Now it's about public health and safety, and you picked up the ball. Yes. Oh, yes, we did. Um, well, uh, in general, uh, we consider that a human health hazard. Uh, that's kind of the process that we mm -hmm. go through. Um, and in general, our responsibility is to uh, investigate, evaluate, and determine whether or not there is a human health hazard located on a property. And so in yep. Alm Road's case, uh, we did receive a call um, from concern of concern um, that there may be health hazards located on the property. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went out and did the inspection. Um, we usually create a report from that inspection divvying out, here are the facts, this is what we saw, and then we kind of go through um, uh, a question and answer process, kind of a process, and we ask ourselves a few different questions in term to determine whether or not we feel health hazards actually exist on the property. Um, after doing that process, uh, we did determine that there were a few health hazards that needed to be addressed on that particular property. Mm -hmm. And so our next step then is to, uh, we work with Corporation Council, we work with all mm -hmm. of the county um, departments that are involved in that particular situation. Um, uh, our particular next step was to, um, uh, you know, we need to send a letter uh, to the owner of the property uh, mm -hmm. and giving them time to, you know, ident identifying what human health hazards are uh, we've identified and telling them that they need to clean it, they need to clean it up, and here's how they need to do that. Um, and so we notify them of that, and we give them a certain amount of time to comply. Statutory, statutorily. Yeah, yeah is, there's yep. important time frames that we have right. to follow in the law. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, and we we did that in this case. Um, same process as we would do for any other human health hazard. Um, if we do not receive response back, uh, which we did not in this case, um, then we would need to go in and, and um, eliminate the human health hazards ourselves. And so that is where we are in this process. And I'm aware that we're doing our vendor search, if you would. We're using our procurement department to help yep. us search yep. for the right uh, business, the yep. right group that will come in and perform the cleanup to the appropriate levels. Yep. Yeah, that's so that's correct. where we are. Thank you. Yep, you know. I mean, anytime you can take a contemporary issue and you let it help people discover how county government fits into that mix, I mean, it's really, uh, right. it, it's really helpful. Right. And I would just like to say that this has really been a team effort on mm -hmm. the county's part. There's all the a lot of different departments involved and they've all been uh, very willing and helpful and, and working together in order to, to make sure that this is handled appropriately because we want to make sure that we're, um, you yep. know, yep. Uh, being compassionate to the people that actually live there but also making sure that the human health hazards are um, abated, abated all the way. If, we need, if we need them to be, yep. Yes. Well, okay, so let's talk, let's transition back over to your department. You've been going through some strategic planning. I just mentioned that we're yep. going through some extra levels of planning yep. in the county government. Talk a little around that and accreditation. I, we've got maybe five minutes or so in the show, and I want to make sure that we help people understand that, and then a little more about the staff you have working in the office, if you could. Sure, sure. Um, strategic planning, I'll start there. Um, there was a process started with strategic planning. Um, I think it was... About a year ago now, um, all mm -hmm. the staff were involved, which was uh, very exciting to me. Um, and as I said, I just started in July, and so I've kind of picked up, and the timeline has been a little bit delayed because of that. Um, uh, but we do have a draft right now, and hopefully that strategic plan for public health will be available early part of 2013. It was great to be part of that process when yes. Faye Tetzloff was leading it with another consultant that had come yes, in. Yes, there was a consultant. Uh, yeah, I, I participated. It was great to see it coming along. Yeah. So I can't see, I can't wait to see what the results are going to yeah. look like. Yeah, I think I think we're going to be. I think you're going to be pleased with them. So. Um, uh, that ties in then to accreditation, and I brought a book here. Um, here's the guidelines for accreditation in public health, so it's quite thick. <laughs> like, <laughs> so most working, government like most government books. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we're working on, uh, on that. Um, one of the uh, objectives I think that 
uh, the draft objectives right now that I think are, is in the strategic plan is that is, has to do with accreditation and accreditation readiness. Um, and so hopefully in the next few years we'll be ready to um, take a look at or at least um, be following the guidelines of accreditation and hopefully be in a place where we could potentially apply to be accredited. So who accredits? Right. Who accredits health departments? Yep. It was something called the um, Public Health Accreditation Board. It's a national organization. And I think, actually, hang on one second. I have who started it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually not on me. But I think it was the Institute of Medicine who recommended that the Public Health Accreditation Board or that some type of national mm -hmm. board look into public health agencies being accredited. And basically what oh. it does is it sets a standard. It sets best, best practices practices and measures um, so that we can all as public health Beautiful. be on the same page and be serving our community in a quality manner, uh, making sure that there's quality uh, yes. programs, initiatives, um, and that the organization is running smoothly and efficiently. Interestingly, um, our ambulance system, for example, I mean, we're looking at accreditation there as well. I mean, yep. this is not an uncommon nope. theme as we all lift ourselves to right. the better practices. Right. So how many staff members are in your office and, and yeah? I think we have about 29 staff members mm -hmm. um, and there's about 24 FTEs. Um, and then, um, you know, we are under the Health and Human Services umbrella and then we are the Division of Public Health. And so in public health, we have um, a few different uh, areas. We have the community health area. That's where you see things like pertussis and communicable disease and mm -hmm. um, things like that. Um, we have WIC women, and infants, and children, which I mentioned before, I think, yes. previously. Yes. We have environmental health, an area called prevention, and then emergency preparedness. Not enough to do. No. <laughs> if you would like to add it, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, fantastic. I, I, I know that the staff work so hard. They do. They're, they're out in all areas. Staff. Yes, yeah. they are. I just have to, I just have to say a shout out to the, to the staff that works with public health. I have the most amazing team ever, so I'm very lucky. So for folks who are in businesses, we might be out helping them um, get the restaurant up and running right. and making sure that it's safe for public consumption, if you would, for yes. the food that's served. You might be out in the schools and helping with the, the, the kids' health. Right, right? exactly. And, yeah, relating health. To, and families, relating to their families and helping those children have better health outcomes so that'll lead to better learning outcomes yep. at school. We, we use a population health sort of perspective. Yes, we do. So, yeah. Yeah, I know we don't have a long time in the show yet, but population health versus individual health. I mean, this is the real story of public health, isn't it? Is. It is. And, you know, public health has been doing this for hundreds of years. And I, I can give you an example. For example, we, we make sure that we have... Um, uh, clean water systems. You know, that happened way back when. Uh, we make sure that people are immunized um, against certain diseases so that they don't die of communicable disease. You know, those are good examples of population-based health and how we use policy systems and environmental change to um, better the health of the entire community and the entire population. And that's your approach, and that's Portage yep. County's approach to public health that here is. in Portage County. Well, listen, I know that I've got to wrap the show up. I have just a few more moments. Um, if folks want to contact Contact you yep. if they want to get involved in participating and in how, how to put the life report into action in our community there's always room yep. for more volunteers to get involved more yep. input from community groups and organizations yep there is yes wonderful and we'll have on the bottom of the screen some information for everybody Perfect. that can 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 help them get linked up with you invite you out to speak at some point and yep. and and get to know you more so that uh, as the face of public health in Portage County you're able to work with them to keep everybody safer and healthier yes Jenny welcome I'm so Thank glad you. to have you here Thank you for, having for sure well, next, next month, as I mentioned earlier in the show, Ross Dick is the guest that I'll be having to talk with you about the Wisconsin Department of Corrections program, that cognitive um, services program that deals with uh, turning people around um, away from criminal thinking. So we'll see how all of that goes. It should be a very interesting show just like this one. And again, Jenny, thank you very, very much. Thank you.